Greetings to percenters. Well, I know that a lot of you are anxiously awaiting the continuation of the diagnostic on this ABS issue, this weird ABS, apparently intermittent issue on this uh, Toyota Solara. Uh, one problem, however, is that the car is gone, but don't worry. We are bringing it back. There is a reason for this. And actually it helps us because this gives us time to kind of regroup. And, um, you know, I wanted to end the video on a kind of dramatic note with drawing out the uh, brake module and all that. We are still going to examine it because we need to. But uh, I got to that point um, jumping ahead by looking at some information online and also looking at the wiring diagrams, which I didn't show in the video because we're going to actually look at the wiring diagrams and walk through that on the pay channel. But uh, after looking at the wiring diagrams, I got a better sense of direction and also realized I made a mistake in the last video when I was looking for that ground side control and thought that I found that it was some kind of solenoid controlled. Um, that is incorrect, it turns out, uh, after looking at the wiry diagram. And um, while, it, while I still haven't got that figured out, the theory is correct, but I actually didn't catch it. In, in the video like I thought I did. So we're gonna cover that in this video and uh, kind of simplify sort of a summary of how that wiring diagram um, indicated that. So let's do this. Let's do what we do best in these situations. Again, remember, I am not a professional mechanic. I have no formal training. I have never been to a class or a instruction on the anti-lock brake system. So uh, I have to learn this because this is my first time experiencing it. And that is the whole point of the channel is that you've got a guy who doesn't have 15 years experience and can tell you exactly what's going on. Like you, you have a guy who has no experience in what's going on and has to figure it out and learn it. That's the whole point. And doing that usually involves a lot of research and a lot of thinking because you can't just execute on your past history and knowledge. That's the whole point of the channel is how can anybody who just has the basic fundamentals do a complex diagnosis like this when they don't have the experience. So uh, I'm going to show you how we do that. So uh, it all starts with the dry erase board of knowledge. We've gathered a lot of data and we have to put that data together to put together a cohesive hypothesis on what's wrong. And that led me to that final dramatic scene in the last video of determining I need to get to that ABS computer. So let's go ahead and summarize what we got so far. All right, I've actually got a car getting towed in any minute now that has a no start. Sounds like it's actually a, a probably more a catastrophic engine failure, but uh, that'll come here any minute. And to fill in time until I get the car back from the customer next week or maybe it'll be two weeks we'll do a video on that but um, uh, speaking of the the pay channel real quick again you guys from the third world countries um, I am getting around to you guys on giving you that free access so don't worry and the second thing is um, Speaking of free access to the pay channel we're gonna do a little competition here um, if anybody can tell me what is different in this scene what something is different um, let me know in the comments what you noticed is different if you're a longtime viewer and the first person that gets it correct, I will give you lifetime free access to the paid channel. So let's review here. First and foremost, our first indication of a problem, no com with the scan tool. Two possibilities for that. One of them, my cheap ass scan tools, both of them, um, just simply don't have the capability to communicate. And uh, that is always a possibility. Second possibility, the ABS module is bad and is not communicating. Now, there is one issue with that that uh, I'm a little concerned about. Um, first of all, I, I do believe I should have communication with that module. I am very positive, although I can't prove it, but I'm very positive in the past I have been able to detect the module, the ABS module, from Toyotas uh, and Lexuses around that year. Lexus, the same design um, and same computer and everything. So um, I even looked back at some of my videos to try to find a, a Lexus or a Camry or something that would have the same computer where I just did an overall diagnostic scan and see 
if my scan tool said no codes detected as opposed to no module detected or module not responding, um, it, it turns out I have no video of that, but um, that of course is not scientific. Maybe I can't communicate with it. Um, there's another challenge with that too, and that is that there were no errors on the PCM, the engine computer, indicating a no-com with the brake computer. Now, two explanations for that. Uh, one of them could be that it, it doesn't give an error for that. Maybe that's uh, usually you would get a U code on a network error like that. Um, but it's also possible that maybe the PCM doesn't know that there is a anti-lock brake system unless the anti-lock brake system announces itself. So in other words, on a lot of, most of the time, the PCM would be hardwire programmed and you would say this car has cruise control, this car has uh, anti-lock brakes, this car has these features, and the PCM would look for those features and the failure to detect them, it would show a U code. But maybe, and this is gonna be hard for me to find out, maybe for this car, it's the opposite, that the PCM is totally um, agnostic to all that, and the cruise control module may talk to the PCM and say, hey, I'm here, and then the anti-lock brakes talks to the PCM, hey, I'm here. Um, I don't know. I don't know which it is, but uh, th there is a little bit of a concern there, for sure, um, that the PCM is not showing the no-com. Um, there is another fact that we have, again, just a piece of data that we have to piece together in this whole thing, and that is when we removed the 60 amp fuse from the car, there was an ABS 60 amp fuse. When we removed that from the vehicle, we caused the symptoms for the customer complaint. We caused the customer complaint. It was a flashing track off light, solid ABS light, which led me to believe, and still does, that there there must be some loss of power to the brake computer, although, it, um, strike that, strike that, I need to correct that, because the brake computer is not on the 60 amp circuit. The, the brake computer is not on that circuit, the wiring diagram shows that very clearly. Um, so let me rephrase that. When there is power removed for that, that 60 amp circuit, the symptoms are, are caused that the uh, customer is complaining about. And therefore, some loss of power on that circuit, not, not to the computer, but a loss of power on that circuit causes me to suspect uh, that direction that we're going in. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, what I don't know is would any fault on the ABS also cause that symptom. For example, if we unplugged a wheel speed sensor, would the result be a solid ABS light and a flashing track off light? I, I don't know. So if that's the case, that any fault is gonna cause those symptoms, well then definitely we're, you know, we can't take this as the only possibility that it had to have been a power loss or a short or open or something. Um, again, as mentioned, the ABS computer is not on this 60 amp circuit. We know this for two reasons. First of all, we, we indirectly determined it in the video. After removing the 60 amp fuse, we were still able to read codes manually with the paperclip bypass on the check engine light on the dashboard. That comes from the brake computer. You might remember in the video when I was looking for fuses related with the ABS system, I did find a ECU fuse that I suspected might be for the computer. And it turns out, according to the wiring diagram, that was correct. It was a guess at the time. Um, but again, as you know, a lot of times I will try to manually map out a circuit uh, before getting the wiring diagram and just turns this one was a little more complicated. But uh, that fuse that I tested and that showed not to be blown, that fuse does control, among other things, the anti-lock brake system computer. Now, that leads to the possibility that maybe there's something wrong on that 15 amp circuit that the brake computer is losing power and that, of course, could cause this to happen. So uh, we'll need to repeat maybe that test again. If removing that 15 amp fuse causes the same exact symptoms with the track off, light flashing, and the ABS on, well, now we've just increased the number of variables. 
If, however, removing that 15 amp fuse does not cause the same symptoms customer complained about that, we can remove power loss to the brake computer as a variable. And by the way, there is another variable here that complicates this with the brake computer in that uh, in reading more thoroughly in the technical manual that I had found, if you remember, um, it states that the brake computer does not lose the diagnostic code information after losing power. In other words, unlike the PCM for the engine, you can't just unplug the battery or unplug the computer and lose the codes. You have to reset the codes manually each time, uh, which is done, by the way, by doing that paperclip bypass and hitting the brake pedal eight times within three seconds, and you can clear that computer. Other than doing that, the brake computer allegedly retains those codes no matter what. And there's a problem. If you remember, when I manually read the codes from the brake computer, it gave the flashing pattern of no codes detected. So think about that. There, there was a ABS fault, an ABS error that the customer complained about. Two customers complained about it because two different drivers of the car. And then when I went to read the codes, there were no codes. Um, again, indicating that, to me, the, that indicates some issue with the brake computer. It should have retained the codes. We should have been able to read whatever those codes were. When we unplugged the 60 amp fuse, the brake computer was able to show us the code for the open circuit, remember? So why, when I read the codes initially, were no codes detected? Um, when the error just happened the day before on maybe two previous drive cycles at most. So um, that is kind of leading me towards that direction of a, a bad brake computer as well as the no com thing. All right, and the final thing um, is with my readings on that 60 amp fuse, but uh, this part isn't really as important. It's kind of more for my curiosity and just education on how this system works. But when we removed the 60 amp fuse, from that port, we didn't immediately get flashing error messages uh, from the ABS light and the uh, track off light. It wasn't until we turned off the car and restarted it without the fuse in place that immediately those lights started flashing. Um, and they kept flashing even after we put the fuse back in. Put the fuse back in, turn the car off, turn it on again, the lights go out. So th there's definitely a detection on startup. There's no question in my mind about it. However, uh, the way that I proved that, um, I did make a mistake on, and we're going to get to that point in a minute. So what I want to do is kind of show you simplified versions from what I'm reading of the wire diagram and um, kind of get everybody on page with this system. The reason being because then when I go to the brake computer and start taking readings, it's going to make a lot more sense exactly what I'm looking for. So let's draw up a little simplified wiring diagram that is going to be important for our brake module testing. All right, from our wiring diagram, if we dissect out the communication aspects, the network from this analog brake system um, computer, we're going to put ABS computer here. So it actually has two branches of outputs that it sends for uh, at least diagnostic information for sure. One of them is directly to the dashboard um, where your ABS light and your track off light flash according to whatever codes are in there. And we know that that system works because we were able to bypass with the paper clip and look at the flashing lights on the dashboard and actually detect a open circuit code, as a matter of fact. So it sends that information on a dedicated path to the dashboard. There is another output from the analog brake system uh, computer, and that one branches off. One goes to the PCM, and the other one goes to the diagnostic link connector where your scan tool goes. Unfortunately, as usual, I kind of have some problems on these diagrams where they're not always accurate, and I've got two different diagrams. One of them shows that the pin number 14 on that diagnostic link connector, pin number 14 is the pin where the information would be output to the scan tool. Another 
version of the diagram showed that it would be a pin 17. And the thing is, is that uh, there's only 16 pins on my automotive link connector for either of my scan tools. So um, the 17 might be for other countries or something. I'm very sure in the United States, 16 pin connector is standard. But it's uh, pin number 14 that outputs that information and I have a pin 14 in this scan tool so um, you know unless it's a software thing that I can't read the brake computer that would be the reason but it certainly isn't a hardware limitation I will have to look at that link connector when the car comes back in and make sure there's not 17 I'm sure there's not but the other thing with this is that that same line branches off to the PCM and um, Again, there was not a PCM code saying, hey, the ABS is not responding. But again, I explained earlier, that may be because the PCM doesn't look for it. Rather, the ABS says, hey, this car has ABS every time you start the car. I don't know. But uh, just looking at the variables, what I'm going to look for on the computer is I want to look and I want to tap this line at the computer and look for output signals. If there are no output signals from this analog brake system computer, that's going to be pretty strong evidence that despite the fact the computer can read at least a no power input, but at least it can read some inputs, and it can output to the dashboard, if it's not outputting here, then that, that's going to lead me very much to believe this computer has a problem. So hopefully that makes sense and how that ties in with the data that we acquired uh, in the previous part of this video. Hey, guess what showed up? My uh, tow truck car. I'll tell you what, let's take a little break from that. And uh, I want you guys to take a listen to this. See if you can diagnose what's wrong with this car by listening to it. All right, that would be a broken timing chain. So uh, the question is whether this is an interference engine or not. So, uh, you know, maybe we will do a video on that. I'm not sure. But uh, let's get back to our dry erase board of knowledge. Just wanted you guys to get a quick peek at that, but uh, that's an easy diagnosis. Mechanic stuff is easy. Electronics is hard. Ooh, man, that engine is in bad shape. We'll probably do a video on that. It's, it's a mess. But um, anyway, let's continue on with uh, where we're at for our thing that requires a little more brain work here. Um, that is this 60 amp circuit. So the 60 amp circuit, uh, basically it turns out the 60 amp circuit only is to provide load side power for two components is is all that that 60 amp circuit ends up doing uh, in the wiring diagram so I'm gonna really oversimplify this so what this circuit is is we've got the 60 amp fuse here and this is a feed to two points and that's it that's all it feeds for the ABS motor relay and the ABS solenoid relay that's all that that 60 amp circuit feeds. That's it. And uh, these are relays. So, of course, we've got relays with our switches here. The uh, switches are controlled by the ABS computer. And by the way, this ABS computer is fed by a 15 amp circuit, not this one. And that is uh, the one that I tested earlier that I suspected may be the feed for it. So um, ABS computer, nothing to do with this other than it controls the solenoids, um, the control sides on these relays. Once you have the connection, then these ultimately go to a big old thing uh, called the ABS actuator something or other. Now, in this actuator, there are a number of coiled components. There's like 10 of them. I'm not sure what all of them are yet, but as you see, we're getting there. I'm going to put it together. There are a lot of 
coiled components. And when I did that amp loop measurement here and the voltage um, measurement here, and I detected that um, solenoid pattern, I don't believe that it was from these relays. I don't believe it was from these relays. I believe what it was was probably feedback that I was detecting from these other relays or solenoids or whatever these, these coiled components are, whatever these are in this actuator module. And I think that was sending feedback that I was picking up on my scope is what I think I was detecting there. These are all controlled by different circuits other than the 60 amp. The 60 amp only controls these. But I believe I was just picking up feedback. So my mistake on that. Um, however, however, this ABS computer still knows whether there is power here or not. Because when we remove this fuse, it throws a code. So it still knows somehow. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure how it does that, but I know that it's some way that it does it on startup. I believe probably the way this works is that when you first start the car, there is a momentary closing of these switches once. Um, and maybe I missed it. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how that works, but I, I just want to figure that out and I want to catch that. Um, but there is definitely something where when you first start the car, the ABS computer does a test of this relay and this relay and knows that, um, that they're functioning. And I'm not quite sure how that works, but it's something when you first start the car, it does a self-test. And I believe that's the most likely explanation. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure um, how that works. And there also, of course, is a, a couple of feeds from here to the ABS computer that, that could be used for that. Whatever the case, not really critically important, but, but here is the thing. Um, we still know that when there is an open in this 60 amp circuit, this ABS computer flashes those dashboard lights. I'm just used to seeing a solid traction off light and a solid ABS light and probably the cruise light flashing when you normally have ABS problems. I don't recall ever seeing where you have flashing ABS or track off. Um, so I, I got to think that at least as far as my knowledge, that's limited to a, a effect of a power outage on the 60 amp and it's specific to that. We'll have to figure out. But well, anyway, that's how that whole circuit works. Um, not really critically important on how that self-test works, but what is important is I do, again, want to test from this ABS computer and check for outputs to controlling these motor and solenoid relays. So I should be able to tap in and see if there is some control of those, um, especially during startup. It, it, it certainly has to do it at least once during startup. If there isn't such output from the ABS, um, again, that would indicate that this computer is bad. Uh, very unlikely that would happen, though, again, because uh, when this is plugged in, it passes the self-test. So there must be functionality there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of, it's still a little bit tricky, but I'm going to figure it out one way or another. I just have to understand it better. All right, well, that catches you up to uh, at least where I am on how this system works. And, um, you know, the other thing, too, with this being intermittent, you know, granted, we could go through a lot of trouble here and not find anything wrong. But uh, I'm pretty convinced that there's something where when the guy's friend was driving the car, he did something where it caused the ABS to have to activate a hard stop or something, probably threw him forward and he hit that child safety switch for the windows, right? But um, the, the thing is, is I'm concerned that if this guy is in a situation where he needs those anti-lock brakes, I'm not convinced that they are going to perform for him. So I want to do something where I can verify that uh, these anti-lock brakes are going to work as needed um, even when there is not an ABS indicator light on the dashboard, I, I do believe if the ABS is engaged, 
that uh, it's not going to operate properly. Um, something else I could do is just test drive the car, try to get those ABS to uh, engage with a really hard stop, see if it lights the dashboard up. That's another thing we, we can do. But um, either way, uh, you know, I, I do believe that it's indicating that there is some problem with that ABS computer, again, especially the fact that there was no codes detected uh, after an ABS light comes on. Um, that's hard to explain. So, all right, uh, I've got to get to this uh, car here. So I think we'll do a video on it. It's, it's pretty interesting. There's some, uh, there's some damage here. It's going to keep me busy for a while. And hopefully next week we'll get this car back and we're going to finish fixing this ABS thing. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. We will see you next time.